right, everybody ready? Can you believe it? This is our 15th annual Walk for Life. I wish you guys could see what I see from up here. You guys look great. Thank you so much for coming. You are such an outpouring of hope and love for babies, women, men, families, everybody that's been hurt by abortion. We have a couple of wonderful surprises for you today. One you can see on my left, we have a jumbotron for the first time. So isn't that great? You guys all the way in the back, you should be able to see our great speakers. And we have some very good speakers today who will share their stories, their pain, their fear, and their hope. With just what happened in New York, allowing abortions up to birth, it is obvious that politicians do not hear our voices. This is why we must get more involved. Not only is the future of our country at stake, but the soul of our country is at stake. We must stand up together and defeat this evil of abortion. And we have a way of to, for all of us to do that together today. We are coordinating a grassroots effort with uh, our big sister, the March for Life in Washington, D.C. We must unite our voices together to make a difference for the pro-life cause. And we have a very easy way to do that today. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. So I want you all to take out your phones right now, your cell phones. Bring them out. Let me see them. Get them up there. OK, so now I want you to text the word MARCH to 73075. I have it up there on the Jumbotron, 73075, the word March. So let, please do that right now. Everybody watching on EWTN, listening on the radio, do the same thing, please. Text the word March to 73075. Thank you for that. Thank you. It, it's going to make a big difference. So we wanted to thank a lot of people. Of course, we can't thank everyone. But we want to thank the Knights of Columbus because they've been with us from year one. We'd like to thank EWTN, Relevant Radio, and Radio Santissimo, all broadcasting us live today. And of course, the parish leaders and bus captains. We don't thank you enough. We appreciate so much your hard work to get the people here um, every year. Thank you so much. And last but not least, we must thank the San Francisco Police Department. Amen. They, they do a fantastic job every year keeping us safe. So as we walk today and as you see them, tell them thank you. Tell them how much we appreciate them. Even though things look dark and hopeless with all these new laws, do not be afraid. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. God is on our side. And speaking of God, I'd like to introduce our Archbishop, Salvatore Cordelioni, to lead us in prayer. We gather get together today with hopeful hearts, somewhat heavy hearts when we see what's happening around the country, especially in places like New York, but hopeful hearts because of such a witness for life, especially among the young. So with that hope, let us join our, our hearts uh, in prayer, uh, thanking the one who has created us and asking his blessing upon us. Heavenly Father, in the beginning you created them male and female. You commanded them to be fertile and multiply, and you gave them dominion over the earth. And when we lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death, but came to our rescue by sending us your Son, like us in all things but sin. The beauty and dignity of human life was the crowning glory of your creation, and you further ennobled that life in the incarnation of your only begotten Son, who restored us to life with you. Teach us to be wise and responsible stewards of all that you have entrusted to us, our very bodies and life itself, our faith in your truth, our common home and all of the material blessings you have given us. Help us especially to realize the sacredness of human life and to respect it from the moment of conception to natural death. And give us courage to speak the truth with love and conviction in defense of life. We pray as well, dear Lord, for all those who promote the culture of death. Soften their hardened hearts and open their closed minds. 
that they may see, understand, and respond to the beauty of your creation and the new life to which you have stored us in your Son. We lift up to you too, Lord, and implore your mercy on all those who have been wounded by the culture of death, especially women who have been scarred by abortion, fathers who have felt powerless, and all those near them and who love them, those who have been affected by their loss of life. Loving Father, we pray for all those who advocate for the sanctity of life in so many ways, especially those who have been persecuted for their unselfish witness and service to life. May they know your peace, light, and joy. And we pray for ourselves too. Purify us. Forgive us for the times we have failed to be grateful for your precious gift of life or to respect it in others. Help us to be faithful, loving, and convincing witnesses to the sanctity of life to all the world. Finally, Lord, we pray for the organizers of the Walk for Life West Coast and all those who have worked so hard to make possible these events that bear witness to your goodness. In particular, we thank you for the men and women of the San Francisco Police Department. Watch over them and keep them safe as they lay their lives on the line every day to protect everyone in our communities. We pray all these things in the precious name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Walk for Life 15. You are a good-looking crowd. I'm wondering if our Jumbotron uh, cameraman can do a 360 on the crowd so you guys can see for yourself how good-looking you are. So, well, uh, I have a couple housekeeping announcements that I figure you probably are paying the most attention now, so it's a good time to... The first is, for those who take Uber and Lyft, you can't be picked up at the end. It's going to be at the old, um, darn it, I forget what it's called. Anyway, take a right on Spear Street down to Mission. It's the old Transbay Terminal. That's the geo spot for Uber and Lyft. So just, just so you know, if you're waiting down the Embarcadero, uh, they won't be coming because that's where their geo spot is for this event, okay? The other is, um, oh, just a few, a shout out to the, um, there's, there's, is there anybody from Colorado Springs here? Hey! <laughs> so I don't know if that's the farthest uh, east that we have here, but, um, but we have a nice group. So, uh, gosh, I, I just, without further ado, I want to, I really want to get to our program here today. Oh, wait, what am I looking at over there? Okay. All right. So should I shout out some areas? Should I, should I get some? So is there anyone here from the Central Valley? How about North Bay? How about South Bay? How about Southern California? In particular, is there anybody, any lifeguards here from San Diego? Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then anybody here from San Francisco? East Bay, did I not say East Bay? Sorry! <laughs> it happens when you're from the city, you kind of forget sometimes. Nebraska! All right! Woo! Connecticut! Sacramento! Los Angeles. <laughs> okay, so just so you know, if when you're walking down Market Street, if there's anyone there who doesn't agree with you and they're shouting uh, things at you, whatever they're saying, one of the things they might say is, uh, why don't you go home? And you can, you know, just feel very comfortable that um, we want you to feel very much at home in San Francisco. So we're, we welcome you all here. And we ask particularly that, that we don't engage. Um, today's not a day to have a conversation. Just say a prayer and keep it going. We, we, uh, 
we have a wonderful reputation for a peaceful demonstration and it's one of our best witnesses. So we ask that, um, that you all carry on that tradition today, no matter how provoked you feel. And, uh, and please pay attention, obviously, to San Francisco Police Department and to our, our, uh, our security who are in the, the bright green vest. So without further ado, I want to um, introduce you to our, uh, the recipient of our Gianna Mola Award. We have our Gianna Mola Award was um, developed to honor what we call unsung heroes in the pro-life movement. So I want to tell you a quick story. About 10 years ago, I went to a benefit dinner for this small pregnancy center. It was a very modest affair in the downstairs of a church. It wasn't a Catholic one, so there was no alcohol served. And um, we were all kind of thinking, what's going on? It was by far the most charming and heartwarming event because there I heard the, 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 the woman who was running the clinic. It was kind of like Mary Poppins' um, carpet bag. They said, oh, well, we do prenatal. We do postpartum. We help with childcare. We do parenting classes. And, and there were people that came up and, and, get, and witnessed to how Alpha Pregnancy Center had helped them. And I thought, how is this possible? But it's so beautiful. And, and it just shows that with God, all things are possible. And when a faithful woman responds to the call of God, then beautiful things come about. So it is with very, very great, um, with, with just, just such, such a profound honor for me on behalf of the Walk for Life and for all of you and for the thousand babies that are here today because of the faithfulness of Alpha Pregnancy Center. And that's our, our own Chastity Ronan and her husband, Matt. Thank you to Loris. It's an honor to be associated with Gianna Mola. Gianna sacrificed her life to save her daughters. Her legacy reveals the truth that God can transform tragedy into triumph and use our painful experiences for the saving of many lives. When I moved to San Francisco, I had no idea God would choose me to champion the pro-life cause. Providentially, he knew before I was even born and had my mom name me Chastity. <laughs> With his great sense of humor, he gave me a name that reflects my call to this work. My first week in San Francisco, I experienced tragedy. I lost my job, my housing, my health care, and then, I found out I was pregnant. I went to Alpha Pregnancy Center for help and found a place that anticipated my fears and had a plan to meet my needs. That pregnancy ended in miscarriage, yet the loss of that baby led me to become the director of Alpha Pregnancy Center, taking it from being a family support center that served only 100 women a year to now being a licensed medical clinic that serves over 1,000 families a year. God transformed my tragedy of unplanned pregnancy and the loss of one child to the triumph of saving over 1,000 lives and sharing the gospel with thousands of families. Alpha has continued to expand and reach even more women after a diagnosis of terminal cancer forced me to resign. Now, I'm trusting God to use the tragedy of cancer in my life for a triumph in his kingdom. In Genesis, Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery and he was unjustly put in prison. Yet God used his suffering to save nations from a consuming famine. Joseph told his brothers, you intended to harm me, but God intended this for good and the saving of many lives. The ultimate example of God transforming tragedy into triumph is Jesus. Can I get an amen? amen. Jesus sacrificed his life to take the punishment that we all deserve. When he died, Satan might have thought Jesus lost, 
But upon his resurrection, Jesus conquered all evil, even death. I want to encourage you, if you want to save lives and conquer evil, get involved with your local pregnancy center. And if you're experiencing tragedy, look at Gianna Mola, look at me, look at Jesus. Give him your tragedy and let him turn it into triumph. Thank you. Amen. And I, I just want to note all you guys out there um, that that chastity has um, got a wonderful, faithful husband. And we don't want you to think we don't think about you guys and we're not grateful for you too. So <laughs> thanks. Um, I want to um, next bring up 40 Days for Life, and I'll let everybody know what that is. If not, who's going to? All right. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm just going to step aside. Walk for Life, West Coast, us hear it. Yes. We are pro-life. We are pro-life. We are pro-life. We are pro-life. And we're going to walk for life. We're going to run for life, but one thing for sure, we're going to stomp on Roe v. Wade. Amen. Amen. We're from 40 Days for Life, and I've got staff members here. We've got Matt, we've got Steve, we've got Sue, and we're here to give our scholarships today, and thank you for walking for life. Well, here at 40 Days for Life, we've got a very simple mission. We pray for an end to abortion in front of abortion facilities across this country and around the world. And why do we do that? For a simple reason. Whatever unjust laws are passed in New York State or in California or anywhere here between, we see that the Lord is on the move, changing lives, transforming communities, healing broken hearts. And that's why through 40 Days for Life, we've seen more than 15,000 lives saved from abortion at that last desperate moment because somebody took one hour of their week to go pray for an end to abortion. That's why we've seen 86 different abortion workers experience conversion, leave their jobs, and begin to walk with Christ following a 40 Days for Life campaign. Sue right here behind me is a former Planned Parenthood manager for nearly 20 years, and she led the 40 Days for Life campaign that closed the abortion facility in Storm Lake, Iowa. Those 86 former abortion workers are proof that there is nobody beyond the reach of God's grace. There is nobody beyond the power of prayer. Look, we see division everywhere. And here we see women and men who don't just support abortion on an intellectual level. They earn their entire livelihoods off of it. When they experience conversion, we know that God is all-powerful. We also know of 99 different abortion centers that have closed their doors once and for all and gone out of business following a 40 Days for Life campaign. Who's got 100 in your community? But we have seen a great influx of young people in the pro-life movement. Look around, young people, families, everywhere you look. And at 40 Days for Life, we want to honor the young people who are ending abortion where they live. And that's why we are so pleased to provide the 4040 scholarship, a $4,040 college scholarship to two women who prove that the future of our shared mission to end abortion is in good hands. Morgan English is a second year a student majoring in accounting at the University of Florida. She is a sidewalk counselor, the Respect Life Coordinator at Catholic Gators, and this past fall she led Gainesville, Florida on a 40-day campaign of prayer and fasting, community outreach, and peaceful vigil to end abortion. Morgan, congratulations. And Anna Green. Anna Green is a junior majoring in biology at the University of Idaho, the president of Students for Life in Idaho. She has attended this Walk for Life before, and she too leads a 40 Days for Life campaign, the first ever in Pullman, Georgia. So congratulations, Anna. And let's join these two ladies. Let's join these two ladies March 6th through April 14th, 40daysforlife.com. God bless you.